time is better than the time before. Uh, today, I believe it will be special because today it's a subject that matters to everyone. It's a subject that matters to all of us. As the young man just said, we all talk about leadership and many of us in my professional career now that I've been involved in this segment for nearly 15 years and in many companies here in Tunisia and some even in the in this area where um, your university is, believe that leadership is something for certain people, that some are meant to lead and some are meant to follow. Um, this has been a subject of discussion for nearly 70 years. Social scientists have been studying this until today, unlike what you're studying, exact sciences, there is no answer as to who should be a leader and who shouldn't. But there is a common understanding that leadership is a, is a journey. It's a transformational journey that begins while we're very young. That we all have the ingredients necessary to become leaders someday. And I, in my 16 minutes left, I'm going to try to bring everything that I know about leadership in a few words and try to provide you with something that I hope will at least begin to make you think or ask questions. So my job here is not to teach you something that you don't know. My job here is to perhaps help you understand what are the right questions to ask. As was just alluded to right now, we're at an era right now in Tunisia where we have many leaders. Today alone, we have nearly 60 people who officially believe they can be president of Tunisia. And officially, we all think we can do the job. On Monday morning, we all think we can do a better job than the coach of the national team. It is true. We all believe we are leaders, and we are all leaders, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to show you how we can do that. Where some fail in reaching that level of leadership is a very common mistake that most people make. And I want you to draw an analogy now between what I'm about to tell you and what you have been going through as students for nearly 16 or 17 years. Our focus when we go to school is results, diplomas. What kind of job am I gonna get? How much money am I gonna make? What social status am I going to have? That is the what. What, if you're, if you're beginning an enterprise, if you're a young entrepreneur like Ziyad here, you're focusing on the product. To use terminology that you're accustomed to, the interface, the processes that we use is, how am I going to get there? Well, I need to study hard, I need to buy books, I need to take math classes, I need to take science classes. And that is where the mistake happens. Not only by us as students throughout our career, but also by politicians and by CEOs and directors of large cor corporations. We don't focus enough on what I call in the business world, the business model of my life. What is the business model of my life? What is the source of, before I get to the how and the what, before I get to how am I gonna do this and what am I going to accomplish? As we see today in the political scene, everyone is telling us what they're going to do, and how they're going to do it. But we know very little about the character of these people and who they are and why do they want to accomplish what they want to accomplish. Having said that, the journey begins 
And the first step is dating. And, th and those of us lucky enough, focus on ourselves. Focus on developing certain traits, certain characteristics. Lots of us know them as values, principles that guide us throughout our life. Because it is with those values, it is with those principles that everything is determined. Values evoke emotions on us. And I'm going to draw, uh, try to follow me here. I don't have a diagram to show you, but we begin with values. It's things that like integrity, honesty, hard work, dedication. We all know what they mean. And they evo evoke certain emotions in us. And those emotions, they could be good emotions or bad emotions. They could be the energy to do something or the apathy to do, to not do something. They could be isolation or they could be working together in teams. They could be doing the best you can do or, oh, why bother, I'll do it tomorrow. These are emotions that are evoked by the values that we have learned. These emotions lead us to be motivated, depending on whether or not these are positive emotions or negative emotions. If they are positive emotions, they will, they will lead us to be motivated to do the right thing, the positive thing. In other words, to act. And that's the next level of leadership. If I don't have my, the right values, the right principles that guide me in my life, if I don't know who I am as an individual vis-a-vis -vis my relationship with the people that are closest to me, because we cannot lead anyone unless we first establish the basis of what we are and who we are and why we do what we do. Why we do what we do is the question that each one of us needs to ask. What is my purpose? in this life. Why do I get up in the morning? I'm going to tell you a little, a, a short story that perhaps best characterizes and best paints. What if I were to ask you today, right this second, to write your own obituary? You know what an obituary is? The annonce du DC. If you were to write your own, you know how when people die, you know, the in the newspaper the next day they say, Ah, oh, let's just say, God bless his soul, he was a nice person, or he was not such a nice person, he did this or he didn't do that. What if you were able today to write your own obituary? What would the world think of you tomorrow? What would they remember about you? In other words, what was your life worth? Why did you live? the legacy you have left behind. And I think, if we think about it in those terms, and by the way, many people actually do this. I work with many top executives that have written their own obituaries. And the reason they do this, because it clearly defines to them, and it reminds them every single day why they exist, what they need to accomplish. And it is from there they can work backwards and in your terms I'm going to call it re-engineering my life. In the business world I call it, you know, re-innovate a business process. So if we can do this, why not begin by what you want the world to think of you, what kind of a person you are, and then work backwards. Every day you get in your car or you get in the bus and think, that is my purpose, this is how I'm going to accomplish this. The story I was about to tell you is about someone we all know very well. Alfred Nobel. You all know, you all have heard of Alfred Nobel. Alfred Nobel was a scientist before he became someone known for the Nobel Prize in science, in culture, uh, medicine, peace. He dedicated his life to, uh, to helping humanity, to achieving everything possible within his means to make it so it, a lot easier for us as human beings. Alfred had a brother who died while he was in his 40s. And the next day, Alfred went, who was living in Paris, by the way, at the time, went and bought the newspaper. 
and was reading his brother's obituary. Lo and behold, the newspaper made a mistake and that there was Alfred who died and so here's Alfred reading his own obituary and um, to his shock, to his demise, he was horrified about what he read. You understand that one of the discoveries that Alfred had done prior to this was the discovery of dynamite. Alfred discovered dynamite not to kill people initially, but to help us in, 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 in mind and in discovering other good things for humanity. Well, that, of course, during the wars, it was turned around and dynamite was being used to kill people, thousands and thousands of people. So among the things that he read about his obituary, what a horrible person Alfred was. He single-handedly killed as many people as one can in a single action. Alfred was this and Alfred was that. He was totally taken back. The very next day, and for 10 years after until his death, Alfred Nobel dedicated his life to peace. What he did was, he was not happy with, the purpose, with his purpose. He was not happy with how people perceived him or the things that he did to help humanity, because dynamite was not helping humanity. In his will, upon his death, he set his entire fortune to rewarding research and helping those who are best, who exemplify humanity and help humanity the best. Alfred was lucky. Many of us are not. Alfred saw in, his own, in front of his own eyes his purpose in life and what the world thought about of him. He replicated, he re-engineered his life. And today, with the values that we know of each other, of, of, of ourselves, the emotions and the motivation that we have, we need to take action to re-engineer our lives, define our purpose, not about what we're going to do or how we're going to do it, but the source, why we need to be, the individuals that we need to be to master who we are, because unless we master who we are, we can never help anyone. Leadership, as I said, being a transformational journey, you cannot, is all about, it's all about relationships. What you have learned so far in school, in some of the better schools in Tunisia, you're, you're, you're some of the luckiest ones, you've learned technology. Technology, if not used properly, if not used properly, is the enemy of leadership. Let me explain. What your friend today, what the word friend today means, it's not someone that you chat with on Facebook. Your network today is your network on LinkedIn. Your buddy today is someone that you occasionally know through social media. There is no one-on-one -on -one relationship. There is no handshake. There is no trust. Friendship has become virtual. We have given ourselves up to technology. We have given up the most basic human fundamental thing necessary for us to lead ourselves. Because leading goes from leading yourself to creating a relationship next with one-on-one, -on -one, let it be your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. Beyond that, it is your relationship with a certain group of people. It might be the kids in your neighborhood, in your classroom. And hopefully someday, a big organization or the society you live in. That process, the how and the what, is only successful if we understand the source, and the source is us. We are the ones that we need to master. We see it today, and I can cite you many examples, but I don't want to make anyone upset. There are many failed leaderships, and it's not because of lack of best intentions. It is because values were never defined. Motivations are the wrong mo motivations. The link between values and motivation is the emotions. These are negative emotions not necessarily positive emotions. 
We say, instead of, say, instead of saying, how can I help others? We say, what's in it for me? Those are emotions based on the wrong values. And therefore, the result of that is someone who can't lead himself or herself, therefore cannot create those trusting long-term relationships. People will only do business or create relationships with those who they trust. No matter the paycheck, no matter the title, it all boils down to trust and relationship. And that does not happen on the internet. That does not happen on the internet. It happens face to face. And for that face to face relationship to exist and be solid, you need to master who you are and what you are. And you do so by being the best leader of you. And a perfect analogy would be if you're an entrepreneur starting a new business. I work with many entrepreneurs. Uh, like there's a couple of them here at, at the Microsoft uh, Center here next door at Esprit at, at, at your university. And I always try to tell these young men and women, don't focus on the end result. That will come by itself. Focus on the nucleus that is you. Because from you, others will learn. It all, it's, it's not about processes. It's not about numbers. It's about behavior. How do you behave in times of a crisis? How do you behave when someone makes a mistake? How do you behave when when you feel left out, because leadership is, after all, it's about creating a community around you, a community, I call it a community of values, that all share that, those values so that you can obtain a certain objective, so that you can reach a certain thing. Well, if the basis is not there, which is your values, if your values are the wrong values, how can you expect these things to last? You, you will see it in the biggest problem facing our corporations today, and you will be working in some of these corporations, is the number of turnovers. People don't last. People don't last. It is the single most big problem that many companies, especially in information technology, because we hire people for the wrong reasons. We hire people based on their CVs and diplomas and grades they got. Ah. You were able to work on this process. Come and work for us. Okay? That is more of a, what they call a transactional relationship. We need to create relationships that are transformational. And these things happen. These things happen when our values equal those of the values of the people that we work with. So in conclusion, and I know I probably rushed, don't be so eager. Don't be so eager to get what, where you want. It's great to know where you want, but work on the basis first. Don't be in a hurry. We live in an instant world. We want everything instantaneously. We want to push a button and make things happen. Even if our food has become instantaneous. Our relationships have become instantaneous. There was a time where you used to have to court a girl for a long time to get to know her values and what she stands for. Now it's an internet relationship. I mean, everything, we have given up who we are. And unless we discover who we are again, and what we stand for, what is important to us, and don't sell out. Don't sell out. Because in the long term, that is the most lasting thing. And in business, as in private life, it's all about sustainability. Thank you.